Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to make a first person shooter in Unity and welcome to episode 31. So this time we're going to carry on and we're going to create a quick little pause menu because last time we pressed escape and we paused our game so we need to have that little menu appear and disappear and we're also going to look at the workings of exploding things so we're going to have a bit of a barrel in this and we're going to shoot the barrel and start looking at exploding. So firstly let's go to game object. Let's go to UI and let's have a panel. Now this panel is going to represent the pause menu. So let's right click and let's rename pause menu. Uh, let's double click it so we can kind of see what's going on. And uh, let me see. I've got that the right way. Let me quickly check which side is our mini map on. It is on the left. So we'll have it that way. So now let's resize this. So I'm going to have it center. Uh, width, let's have it as 200. Height, let's have it as 300. Let's see if that looks okay. Perfect. And uh, just for good measure, I'm going to put in there some text which says paused. And I'm going to have that at the top and center. Perfect. Uh, position zero, bring it down. Obviously, you can you know take way more time with this. I'm kind of rushing things to get things done here. Uh, so that's our pause menu. Uh, obviously, we can have different buttons on here. Uh, we're going to be able to have you know the ability to quit game or whatever. But for now, I'm going to have game object, UI, and button. Uh, drag the button into the pause menu and zero zero let's just have it as resume and you've probably guessed it by now all we need to do is get that button to actually resume the game so if we go to our scripts folder and the script is pause game so let's head into there in visual studio now the script already unpauses the game itself, doesn't it? Because we can press escape again to unpause it. But this script itself now needs some extra game objects attached to it because we actually have that pause menu. So let's start with that. Public game object, pause menu, semicolon. So at which point, we then need to have after pause equals true. We need to have pause menu dot set active true semicolon. And then obviously the inverse down here. So after pause equals false, we need to have pause menu dot set active false and save that script. Now, Obviously, we also need to create a script for that button and we're going to use this same script. We're just going to create a different method. So we need to put this method beneath void update and we're going to call it public void uh, on pause game open close bracket open curly bracket and all we need to do is just copy these lines of code from the else statement into unpause game and save. Basically what we've done here is instead of being able to press escape, we're just pressing that resume button and go back to Unity. And if we find the object that we attached the pause game to originally, which is down here, we obviously now need to use that uh, third variable, which is the pause menu. So drag and drop that into pause menu. Uh, right click on the button and rename it and let's just call it resume game and then we need to make that button work so we've done it before let's click plus let's drag the paused object over into there click no function pause game and it's unpause game now the last thing we need to do is turn off the pause menu up here so now if we press play we can do what we need to and then pause the game and then resume. Perfect. And it still works if we press escape again. 
Excellent. Now that is the simple workings of an actual pause menu. And we're probably going to deal with that a little bit more because I'd like more intricate details to appear within that pause menu. Now the way I like to design games is I like to do things and then switch to something else to kind of refresh your brain on what you were originally doing. Focusing on one thing over and over and over again can be a little bit of a pain. So now we're going to do something a little bit fun. We're going to start looking at exploding things. Now, what I would like to do in this episode is at the very least have a barrel that when we shoot, it looks like it's kind of exploding. So to do that, what we're going to do is let's start by, in fact, let's zoom in onto our player. And let's just bring them over here, out the way. And I'd like a barrel maybe here that when we shoot, it kind of, as I say, gives that impression of an explosion. So to do that, we're going to import some barrels. Now let's go to our objects folder and I'm going to drag and drop this barrels. Now it's worth noting that these barrels have been created and I do believe they may be on the asset store. I'm not entirely sure. It's something I've used in development for quite a while. Now what we're going to do is use destructible objects. Now a destructible object isn't something that you can just put in. For example, if we put this barrel in, we want to shoot it, it won't just suddenly break up. We need to create those broken pieces as well. Now, if we zoom into our barrel, and we're going to focus here. So the entire object itself is going to be encompassed within a cube because we're going to use it very, very similarly to how we've used the enemies. So game object, and 3D object, and cube. And now let's bring this cube to the barrel. In fact, what we'll do is I'll drag it onto the barrel itself and zero out the position so we get it in the exact place and then uncouple. And I'm just going to have it, let's have it as 1.2 by 1.2 by 2. Maybe that's a bit too big, 1.75. That looks like it should do. I'm going to turn off the mesh renderer and I'm going to right click, rename and call this barrel object. And then I'm going to drag and drop that barrel onto there. So the cube is the main object. The barrel is the secondary object or rather the child object. Next thing we need to do is have the broken pieces in there as well. So I'm going to bring in this broken piece and quickly apply this texture to it. There we go. So it's the same. And the idea is we need this broken barrel to be in the same place as this. So if we drag and drop onto barrel 2-1 there to kind of child that object as well, zero out the position and then drag it down so as it's perfectly aligned about there and then uncouple it once again. Next thing I'm going to do is disable barrel 2 by turning it off up here and then duplicate the broken barrel or control press D and I'm just going to move it back up to the top to about there so them two are now together and we just need to rotate on let's do it on the X by 180 and align it maybe about there so they don't necessarily have to match perfectly but you'll see the principle of what's going on now the barrel itself needs um, some rigid body and it also needs the uh, mesh collider as well. So on each of those two broken barrels, add component, physics, mesh collider, and we need to tick convex. And we should see that's worked fine. Same applies to the other barrel. Add component, physics, mesh collider, and convex. And also add a rigid body. The rigid body is used because we need physics to occur, i.e. when it explodes, we need it to kind of shoot off in whatever direction. Same applies with the original. So both of them should have the rigid body and the mesh collider attached. At this point, we need to create another game object within this barrel cube. So right click and create empty, F2, broken barrel. And then those two objects, the broken ones, top and bottom, drag and drop into broken barrel. 
and then disable that one and re-enable the original barrel. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in some audio that's going to be used to, as it were, blow up the barrel or rather we'll just do the sound, the tinkering sound for now. So when it kind of blows upwards, hits the ground, it makes that metal tinking sound. So let's go into audio, drag and drop, the metal hit. And again, everything here is available on the website for free. Head over there, downloads and assets, FPS, you can get it there. And let's attach that uh, object to the barrel. So let's find it, which one did I call it? It was metal hit. So onto barrel object. And I'm going to untick, play on awake and turn the volume down to maybe 0.4. We'll see how that goes. Okay, so let's get this working as we want it to. If we go to our script folder, uh, because we did some of this originally in Java, I'm going to continue with this for Java, but I'll also put the C Sharp version if you've done everything in C Sharp. Ideally, what I'd like to do at some point is convert everything to C Sharp, but I don't want to waste too much time in tutorials. So for now, I'm going to hold Control, press D on the original enemy script, which is the zombie one. Hold Control, press D. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press F2 to rename it and have it barrel blow. And if we open that up in Visual Studio, what we need to do is firstly change the zombie to be the barrel. And then we need another game object to be the fake barrel. So fake barrel. There we go. Now, obviously, this isn't a zombie, so we don't need the end zombie function. Uh, we don't need any of this here because it's pretty simple what we're going to do. We're going to turn off the real barrel. So the barrel dot set active false semicolon. And then the fake barrel is turned on. So fake barrel dot set active True, semicolon. Now, one thing to note here, the enemy health, which is the, well, say the barrel has got health, so how many shots can the barrel take before it blows up? I want it to just be one. And if we remember correctly, our gun fires um, a damage of five at the moment, so I'm gonna set that to just five and save that script. Head back into Unity, and then we need to attach that barrel blow to the barrel object. So drag and drop onto there. And then we just need to set those two variables. So the barrel is the original and fake barrel is the two pieces which break off together. Now we are gonna do a little bit more after this. We just want to test that this works for now. So let's press play and let's go and pick up our gun. And let's see if this works. Oh, we need ammo. That's why that didn't work. So we need ammo. There we go. So you can see what's happening there. Now, the idea is I want some sound to occur, at least for when these hit the floor, uh, before we actually focus on the explosion. So that can be done real, real simple by creating another script. So right click, create C sharp script. Let's have this as barrel bang. And if we open that up in Visual Studio, all we need to do with this is we need to get rid of void start, void update, and any notes. We don't need them. And we're going to have public audio source. And we're going to call it bang sound semicolon, which was the one we bought in before. And we're going to have void on collision enter. So when it basically collides and oh, we don't need it to be private, that's fine. And what we need to do is check its velocity of whether it's say moving fast, moving slow. Uh, and we can do that by going if in brackets collision dot 
relative velocity dot magnitude is greater than whatever you would want it to be. So in this case, I'm going to put the number one because I want it to kind of make that clanging noise uh, at low velocity. If you want it to be high velocity, you would have that as, say, 10. So the lower it is, the more chance it's got of making a noise from a simplest movement. Higher it is, it's not going to make a noise at all, basically. Uh, open bracket, and at that point, all we need to do is bang sound dot play. Open close bracket, semicolon, and save. And it's worth noting it kind of auto filled this bit here, the collision collision setting here. So make sure it has got that there, otherwise this won't work. So head back to Unity, and then we need to attach that barrel bang onto both of our broken pieces right there. And then we need to set the bang sound, which is attached to the barrel object, if you remember. So drag and drop onto there. Same with that one. And now let's press play and let's give this a go. Let's pick up our gun. Get ourselves some ammo. Perfect. So you can see how that's working in effect. Now, that'll seem much cooler when we have a bit of flames, a bit of fire, and an explosion, which is what we'll do next time. So we'll be looking at an actual explosion and force. I think the lighting needs sorting a little bit as well. And we'll also start looking at some camera effects to make this look a little bit cooler. So, guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.